so this is Hannah and Ali. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, we run quite a lot of these flight plan webinars, which are especially for our customers. Um, and it's especially helpful when we come up with a particular problem um, that affects quite a number of the customer base. Um, and we've learned loads in the past few months around using Receptive to bring the voice of the customer into like existing pieces of development and projects and also how to give customers a great experience without you feeling overwhelmed with the number of requests and updates that you have to give. Um, a big part of that is managing expectations with teams and customers. So we've developed a set of best practices and we've also got some product updates. So there's much excitement about that, wasn't there, Ali? Yes. Um, <laughs> to help you do this like really effectively. And, and as always, if you've got any questions, get them in chat on the webinar and we'll answer them as we go through um, or contact your CSM afterwards. Um, and we're also, you're going to put some resources together, aren't you, Ali? Yes. I will be getting in touch with everybody after the webinar. Um, we go through quite a lot of practical things and there's a lot of kind of workflow changes in this webinar or um, advice that we're giving. So we'll be sending out uh, some resources to make it really clear kind of which, which steps you need to take and kind of to bring it all together. Cool. So we're going to go over how to use receptive when your product roadmap is already planned out. Or another way of putting that is how to bring the voice of the customer into your existing product developments. And then we're on to the revelations. It sounds very grand. Um, creating a feedback library, not a product backlog. And our second revelation was about customer success owning customer updates. So essentially that's best practice for keeping customers informed and excited instead of uh, frustrated. Um, so let's crack on then so if you already have your product roadmap planned out that is great it's probably a mixture of strategic projects improvements to existing features and then a lot of those items or at least some of them usually come directly from the customer base i know some customers you will have roadmaps that change a lot some of you have roadmaps that don't change very much but it, it really doesn't matter um, the pain we've been hearing from our customers is that it can be a real challenge to manage feedback well when there is already a product roadmap in place for the coming months um, or even longer. Um, but actually, Receptive can work brilliantly um, by keeping customers excited and engaged about what you are working on, even if it's not things they have specifically asked for. Um, so the three things we were going to go through was uh, how you do that. So adding more to your release log, adding more to your uh, roadmap, and then bringing the voice of the customer to things you are already working on. Um, so I thought we'd do this by kind of opening up receptive and, and talking through it just to make it a, a, a bit more a bit more relatable, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'll let you drive, Ali. Do you want to? Yeah, let's do it. So um, the first item, adding more items to your release log. This is really important because you need to be shouting about what you've done, regardless of whether it came from a customer or not. So what we've been hearing is a lot of, you know, a lot of companies are working on strategic projects, like Hannah said, um, or even little quick fixes, <clears throat> but they didn't necessarily come straight from receptive. And that's okay. We want to get everything into receptive so that we're communicating back, you know, what's actually happening to your customer base <clears throat> and your teams as well to keep them aligned. Um, so this helps them see progress and understand what you've been working on. So we can do this by either in use the coming from customers or a new request, you can use this form to finally, there it is, to- The internet uh, is not yeah, great. We're, in, <laughs> we're hiding in the back room in the office and everything. It's not receptive, it's the Wi-Fi. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> honestly, truthfully. <laughs> Call the internet man now. Again, again. He's been in loads, hasn't he? Um, I feel a bit sorry for him. So you can go ahead and add things here and then just immediately move them to your release log. One exciting thing that we're actually going to be doing is um, we have a preview here on our own blog. <clears throat> There's a section called releases. And this is actually a 
pretty close mock-up of the design of the release log um, that we're thinking about doing in Receptive. That was a that tricky was, way to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a customer request, actually. So yeah, like yeah. Ali said, we're we're making the release log uh, look a lot nicer, and also you know getting into a state that you'd want to like sharing and get it get it public, as exactly. a lot of companies want to, or at least have the option to do so anyway. Yes, exactly. So this <clears throat> this is a perfect example of kind of how we use Receptive. We had a few, probably five different feature requests that were really specific about the um, kind of things people people like to see in the release log. And what we did was we combined it into one project. We merged them all together. And that item is now 68812 in receptive. If you'd like to add your vote to that or add your comments, um, I don't think it's gonna be- Oh, we're on, on the here. test. Oh, oh I forgot we're on the test site. <laughs> oh okay. my goodness. But go ahead and, and search for that. We'll send out a link after the, after the webinar, but that's 68812 if you wanna add your vote to that. Um, I feel like we're playing bingo now. I know, I do too, <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Brilliant. Receptive just bingo. Call with, with just like, call in now and you can win a prize if you're the eighth caller. That is not true. <laughs> we, we have nothing good. I don't to know say. what's going to happen if you ring five, five digit number. <laughs> We're not responsible for what happens next. Um, so back to the slides. I don't know how to get there. Um, so the second thing was to add more to your, to your actual roadmap. Um, and you can do this the same way we just you know showed you with the release log. But I actually think that the what's coming list is perfect for this. Oh, sorry, I'm, so I'm like trying to stay in no, here. No, like you're fine, idea. you're fine. So the same way we just <clears throat> added things to the release log, we can add them to the what's coming list. And this is super easy because it doesn't take any thinking. You kind of just, if something's being worked on, you put it into building. If something's coming up next um, or something you like the idea of, you can just move it into planned. Um, and we understand that you know, sharing this with customers isn't the right choice for everyone, but giving customers a sense of the problems you're solving and where the product is heading can be really, really powerful for creating confidence and alignment. Um, so if customers and teams can see what's happening, they understand, you know, where their requirements fit overall and the list view is perfect for this. So again, you don't have to, you don't have to use this for the, detailed requests that came from customers you can create projects and and put these in here instead yeah and it's nice just seeing what, roughly what's coming up isn't it like, i yeah. don't know every little i don't know about you but i don't know yeah. every tiny thing the uh development product teams here are working on but i have a rough idea of the direction i can dip into the roadmap when i need to um and I guess that's the thing to consider with the roadmap as well, because you can have multiple roadmaps. Yeah. Like I've got an example customer on here. Like customers don't want to see everything in the same way that sales team don't care about everything. So you can be really selective about what you share and you, you don't have to, you know, that takes away the fear of, oh, I don't want customers seeing everything. You know, just show them a little bit. And they're exactly. honestly really, really happy with that. Exactly. You're 90% of the way there with receptive already. So it, it can kind of help just to give them a place to jump in and, and see that. Um, so the third item is to remember that receptive is really powerful for product research. Sorry, it's, it's bringing it the customer voice into development. So, um, <clears throat> just because you've, you know, received the feedback doesn't mean that that's the end of the road for that piece of feedback. That's actually where things kind of get started. And, you know, you can't every, ever be every single user of your product. Your customers have a unique experience of of how they use your product, different use cases. So they can bring an awful lot to the table, um, especially with their different use cases and pain points. So if you combine your knowledge of how to create great software and the customer feedback, you can actually you know, combine those and have a really great team to build a great product. Um, yeah, and we're starting to do that a lot more with, um, just on the email, aren't we? If we jump, if we jump into, uh, into kind of product again yeah um so like if we were about to start work on this we would probably go and like send an email to the 63 people who were already interested in it or we might add a few different accounts or customers we know this would be relevant to if we were trying to uh, come up with a solution for a particular uh, customer segment as well so you can be really targeted about how you're engaging uh, with the customers and who you're engaging with um but again it just goes back to if you've already got a roadmap perfect like it doesn't matter if the things on your roadmap didn't come from the customer you can bring their voice into what you're already building and customers really really love that 
and it helps product team as well if, if product team have like a set of customer use cases and a set of use cases from prospects as well even it can be like really helpful in in letting them think about how to be creative about the solution um is intercom a good example yes. Where I bring this in? it is a great example um because that was something that happened to us a, a few weeks ago so the the top level request was uh we need you to integrate with intercom which is like well what can be complicated about that it sounds very and the simple yeah, it? It's been this for years it's like oh, it's, yeah. it's something that's been on our radar for a really long time yeah and we've always just talked about it as this priority request called intercom thinking we knew what it was thinking we knew what that was <laughs> But like, luckily, because we've designed the request form to capture use cases as well, we started actually looking into what customers were saying about the intercom integration. And we were like, wow, this is like yeah. totally different, yeah. wasn't it? We, it had was one thing, we had one thing in our minds. And yeah, well, there's all sorts of use cases for yeah. that simple. It's a feature request, right? But the use cases behind it vary drastically from company to company. And so we're going to use flexible emailing to to do this research before that gets yeah. moved into the building stage. Well, like internationalization, yes. we, we knew like internationalization was one of those projects mm. for us that um, there was really high demand in the customer base. There was really high demand um, from prospects through the sales team. And strategically, it made an awful lot of sense for us to invest in that uh, feature. But then you start thinking about it. So like, well, what does this actually mean? And then we dug into the use cases yeah. and it's like, okay, so 50 people need French, yeah. 60 need uh, Spanish, people want to update this, that and the other. And it's really the voice of the customer that's helped steer that project to be developed in the right way. Yeah. But if we'd just gone, oh yeah, internationalization and built what we thought. Exactly. It, wouldn't have it would have been a completely different thing from what our customers actually wanted. Yeah. And prospects as well. It's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. oh I feel so enlightened right now. <laughs> Dear me. Um, so I guess, I don't know why I keep going over that slide. I guess the summary then with bringing voice of customer to what you're already doing is that customers are brilliant at improving what you already have as well. And that's something else to, to add, into a mix, add into the mix. Um, so they're bringing the pain points, their goals, their use cases, not features. And I really like, Ali came up with this the other day, that feedback doesn't end when a suggestion is made. Um, so when customers actually start using that feature you've developed, they are so good at, you call it colouring in the circle, yeah. don't you? They come along and they kind of bash all the like edges off. And I think that's, yeah. a, that's a really great thing um, that you as a team can't do on your own. We've been talking for a little while now. If anybody has any questions, um, either send them over in the question area or the chat area. I'm not really sure what it's called. Um, but we'll be, we'll be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, you know, does this sound realistic for, for your company? Um, do you have any questions about how to actually implement these changes and things like that? Cool. So in some of the first bit then, receptive isn't just like new things. Share what you are working on because honestly, customers will be really excited about that. Get the voice of the customer into development and remember you're a team. Um, so you have a different kind of view and way of doing things than your customers do and, and vice versa. Like together, you can come up with some really cool stuff. Woohoo! Revelations! I feel like we need a song. Um, so, <laughs> the, at least it's not Britney. I know, I was oh, going to say, I've been listening to Britney today. been listening to today. Britney today. You started it. <laughs> um, so, the two big revelations we've been really, really eager to share with everyone is well the first one create a feedback library and not a product backlog so i need sound effects because i want there to be like a big you want a sound effect? yeah <laughs> Ta -da. Ta -da. so like traditionally in SaaS development we've got we've all got this concept of a feature backlog we actually, when you think about it, it makes me feel quite sad um, because the very definition of a backlog is an accumulation, especially of unfinished work or unfilled orders. So um, it makes me feel a bit miserable. Yeah, exactly. So it kind of suggests that as a product team or as a SaaS business that you're constantly battling this like growing list of features and ideas that need to be done and you just haven't yet. Um, so we're starting to change people's mindset with this. So change your mind, backlog of features that you're not dealing with, triaging, start thinking about that feedback you're receiving as a library and not this horrible 
backlog. So receptive to your library, um, build a library, share what you're working on, but then go and access the type, right type of information when you need it. Um, so like a redesign project is my favourite example. Um, so like the feedback you receive over time about the design of your product is probably going to be re relevant regardless of when it was submitted. So we like really regularly come back to Request and Receptive when a project lands on our roadmap. And like the intercom thing, uh -huh. the intercom integration has been knocking around for a couple of years. Exactly. And you can't build everything. That's insane. You have to act strategically. You have to act in the interest of your business and your customers. And part of that is saying no to things or not building everything immediately. Um, so when it was the right time to look at uh, Intercom, we've gone back, we've looked at all the feedback and that's helped the product team understand uh, what we can improve and it's empowered them to go out to the people who are interested in it and to you know, get all that information um, together. So it's like basically don't, don't read all the books, you yeah. don't need to triage every piece of feedback, different bits of feedback are relevant at different times even down to the customer segment so earlier this year we did a run of improvements that were just targeted at enterprise users for example because their use case is very different to an sme user um and that's the beauty of receptive everything's stored in one place nothing's lost that need to act on everything is is removed and uh that's especially true if you're setting expectations well with the product feedback policy which which i'll go over uh in a second um, so Ali, do you want to go over some like practical? I'm going to keep this nice. bit quick because I'm pretty sure everybody's sick of me talking about to keep the triage very, very quick. Um, but one thing I just kind of wanted to, I don't think we need the, do you need anything in there? What did you want to Oh, oh sorry. I was going to no, okay. um, just mention <clears throat> like uh, the things you can do to like build that library was like building yeah, yeah, yeah. your um, suggest form and the timestamps thing. Yeah, for sure. Let's jump into that. That's a good idea. So the whole, this whole webinar is all about taking the, shifting the focus from, you know, things that <clears throat> new ideas and new projects that your customers want you to build and really focusing on the things that you're already building or, you know, the things you actually have time to work on. So in that context, if you think about the triage, you don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, adding tags to every single thing, making sure everything is perfect. Um, because you, you may never, ever, ever get another vote on that item. And so why, why spend that time? So what you want to do is look at your suggest form and kind of find ways to automate to get the information you need the first time around. Um, so these, this is our suggest form on the demo site. I think it's slightly it's not, different on Yeah, ours. it's not great on the demo site, but you get the but, idea. But I think there's, there's, um, there's a help doc that we'll send out with that, which has lots and lots of ideas. But the point is to get to the heart of the problem and not just like we said, um, you know, with the intercom integration, it's super helpful to have the actual use cases and the pain points that customers are experiencing, you know, not having the intercom integration instead of just one line intercom integration. So instead of having title and description on your form, make sure you customize it and check out our best practices on how to actually do that. Um, uh, yeah, and I guess the other thing that ties into it as well is, um, again this is a, a triage point um you can set things to awaiting feedback and what we've done on as well is um we've said you know we're gathering use cases go check out the feedback policy and that outlines like how we collect feedback and what we do with it and how and how we use it and to be honest it doesn't matter if if you've got you know 100 requests with one vote on at the time that becomes relevant to you just go in send exactly. an email out stir up some interest it, it works great exactly um and one <laughs> yeah the uh, the timestamps one is uh, is a good one isn't it it's is really good uh, so what happened was we were about to release something that had been a request with us for is it two years or three years it was a it was, long it was, yeah it was, it was years <laughs> yeah Say no more. It was years and we went to release it and I happened to be in the room and I felt this like wave of hesitation of bleh, like the sick yeah. feeling. I'm just being sick. <laughs> but this like wave of hesitation. It's like, oh, this looks so bad. It's like we're releasing something that's two years old. That looks terrible. But actually, as we were saying, it's not terrible. It's that we've acted in a measured way and uh, worked on that request at the right time. Um, so what we've done is removed timestamps from the customer view. So I've hopped over into the customer view of uh, Receptive 
and it used to say up here requested x years ago months ago um so you can just go into settings um and you'll see that just here hide timestamps from customers so again this is playing to that idea of you building a library showing with customers what you're doing and getting them excited but you're also not having that weird clash yep. with having a big fat timestamp on on everything um i've just uh, yes yes so i've just had a question asking if the webinar is available later and it, it certainly will be so we'll, we'll send the recording and resources uh, out to everyone afterwards um so yeah definitely recommend the uh removal of oh we oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah someone turned time stops on today so exciting. um but yeah it was just a real clash with the philosophy of receptive so that was uh, and we actually used um that was another case where we added it to receptive and we sent it out to quite a few customers and we had all sorts of feedback on it because it was just an idea we had we were like is this a good idea is this a terrible idea uh, and we really validated it with our customers within 24 hours. We we're like, yeah, we, need, it was, to, we yeah. need to do that. It was and, turned around. And it's optional, hours. obviously, but it's going to be a really nice, it's going to be really nice for, for the champions um, going forward, I think, to not have that pressure. Yeah. And that's another really good example of something strategically that made sense for the product. It, ha it wasn't something that a customer had suggested, yeah. but we understand our customers enough to know that would be re relevant, but we then went away and, and validated that before, exactly. we, before we took action. <clears throat> um, regard sorry, just questioning. Uh, so regarding the setting above, show vote count customers, does that include internal votes as well? It either shows it to customers or it hides it. So it, um, it doesn't matter if it's a customer. Or a team vote but it just shows the because does it show all votes collectively customer and team um yeah i think it's all i think it's all votes. collective amount of yeah. votes yeah <clears throat> yeah cool nice one um <coughs> was there anything else there ali i think that's missed? it for that section fantastic so don't read all the books reading books is good but not all of them <laughs> Um, so very quickly for anyone unfamiliar with the product feedback policy, which we've mentioned uh, a couple of times now, quick 30 seconds on that. A lot of you have already got these in place, but we can't stress how useful this is. It's a really short document that you can put in your help docs or on your website or in your app. And all it does is it explains how you receive feedback, how customers should give feedback to you, how you act on it and how you can pay uh, back. And it's just about setting expectations with your customers and with your team. Because honestly, if you uh, review feedback every three months, every six months from customers, as long as they know what to expect, they're generally like really happy. Yep. Um, and we've got a whole site, productfeedbackpolicy.com, um, with a template, examples, all that sort of thing. Um, and it's kind of, it's, it's really important for the expectation piece, hence me going on about it again. <laughs> You'll never like, escape. You, like you with your triage, <laughs> yes, like exactly. triage, triage, triage. We both have the things we like to lecture about. Um, oh, so yeah, revolution number two is is kind of an exciting one. Um, we've we've um, realized that <clears throat> the teams that should be updating receptive with like new releases. Uh, items that have been added to the roadmap and updates as things change status doesn't necessarily need to be the product team. Um, once second. sorry, I'll read. I'll read that question in a second. Okay, perfect. We had another question. Come um, so we've been finding that product and development teams are are actually quite hesitant to update customers and don't always have the skills required to communicate well with the user base or well and quickly with the user base, especially in larger organizations where there's a, there's a really big um, degree separation between those between those teams and the, and the customers. So some teams are totally fine and that's great, um, but they're they're really in the minority. So if you're experiencing this, then definitely listen on. Um, we've even had the same issue here at Receptive. Work would be getting completed, uh, but the product team were really hesitant to you know update it. They're writing really they're using the standard release notes with no um, details about that you know how to use that feature. Or, or they just wouldn't uh, release the items. I love our dev team, no. Yeah, <laughs> and our product dev, team. Dev and product team, we <laughs> love you. But it's like, it's a general thing, is that if you work yeah, yeah. in product or development, like, you do have some contact with customers, but a lot of them yeah. 
really do. And, and, we're, <laughs> and we don't know what to know, say. On the customer facing side, it's day in and day out, so it's not. It's, it's just, just not. Yeah, it's normal and it's not stressful. Um, and so, yeah, we've just we've just been finding, kind of looking at different ways. So over the last few months, we've been trialing a different approach with new customers, where a customer facing team, uh, usually customer success in SaaS, are owning the updates in Receptive. And they instantly know how to write good, write good updates that customers understand, um, kind of it's in their language and, and addressing their pain points. And they don't have to, they don't have the fear of saying the wrong thing. So they just kind of get, get receptive updated really, really quickly, which is really important. It feels so much like sending an email, isn't yeah, it? Like, oh, exactly. I'm just telling my customers and about this. And it could this. be to 400 people, but it's, it's just not a big deal because no. it's, they're, they're speaking in the same language. Um, and be, yeah, because they deal with the users every day, they're, they're kind of on the same page. And that isn't always the case of members of the development or the product teams. Um, <clears throat> so here's kind of what we suggest on a practical level. I think I skipped over these items. So customer success team should own um, things like adding existing items to the release log, like we talked about earlier, owning the roadmap and getting things onto the roadmap, like we discussed earlier. Um, adding in the release notes and updating requests and then gathering the feedback in receptive and actually presenting that to the product team. Um, so instead of, you know, forcing the product team to go in and use the reports in their, in their road mapping meetings, if you're already meeting with them to talk about the voice of the customer, just kind of use the data in receptive to take that to them and present it to them. And this point isn't just customer success teams. This is anybody, anybody who's working with the product, who is working with customers or prospects, like this is everybody can use the data in Receptive to, to kind of make their case and pr bring the data behind Receptive to those, to those meetings. Cool. Yeah, so this is, like, this is like super practical stuff, isn't it, that customer facing teams should be thinking about. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking okay. about like a superhero oh. <laughs> on the superhero side of the cool. I was like, okay, da -da -da. spacing out here. Um, so here's, here's the practical stuff that you can do to sort this out in your organization. It's going to be different for everybody. And again, I'll be in touch or your CSM will be in touch to, you know, with the practical aspects of this after the webinar. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess that's a good thing to note. This could yeah. be quite a big change for you, but honestly, yeah. it's, few little things getting ironed out and it's making a really really big difference yeah. isn't it so yeah. yeah i think i think we'll kind of just skim over this and then um we'll, we'll keep it simple so ask the product team where their roadmap is um what do they use and can you get access so you kind of need to basically really log where are the roadmaps and bring data to the product teams this is about um how does the customer facing team actually get the information they need to update receptive? And so that's why it's, it's like yeah, very, yeah. very practical. Um, and there's a few different ways you can do that, but usually product teams will have some sort of, you know, if they're using Jira or GitHub or some or sort of some product, product thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> some, sort of, some sort of tool that they're using Running or whether thing. it's a spreadsheet. Um, there's usually, usually pretty detailed plans somewhere. So if you can get your hands on those and then translate them into a, a nice Yeah, just something that, that customers would want to see. And the big yeah. benefit is that, of that is that as a business, you're then supporting the customer well because you've got people dealing with customers all day, yeah. talking the customer language when it comes to uh, updates on feedback. You're supporting the product team by bringing real customer use cases and data to that as well like look here's 20 use cases about this request that's potentially worth like 50,000 in MRR like you can do that in receptive um, and then it's obviously by doing those things you're supporting the uh, the business as well one other thing is if um, the one thing we've we've said in the past is to like make sure things are updated instantly I think we're actually kind of coming away from that approach where it's, if you're gonna take this approach where customer facing teams are updating receptive, it doesn't need to be instant. If you have monthly meetings with product and they tell you what they wanna be communicated to customers, it's okay if that's a little bit delayed. Um, I think it's just important to make sure, again, switching the focus from the new requests and the things that you want product to build and focus on what they are building and really help customers understand the importance of that stuff as well. Yeah, definitely. So if you're on the product team like think about how you can give customer facing teams access to that information that, that yeah. they need and that they can translate uh, for customers um, 
think about customer use cases and everything you do and, and this is a bit of a learning curve and it, it has been for us as well you know we have to you know say to the product team we're about to start on that let's let's go talk to the customers first but just saying that makes yeah. makes it happen it's only a little a little change um and then on the product side as well just remember that like saying no is fine and it is actually a really good thing i can kind of touched on earlier you can't build everything and if customers are seeing that you're jumping on every request and implementing every request it actually freaks them out yeah it's like a lack of control there if you can explain what you're doing and why that is brilliant like product teams say no to requests from customers all day long but yeah. but give a reason share what you are working on and get the voice of the customer into uh, the things that you are doing yes. um, and by default those same benefits obviously uh, obviously apply one thing I did not fit into the webinar, but I really want to show everybody is um, to re-summarize this app and then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll let you do that. Just a little um, teaser there. A little teaser. It's like, the <laughs> it's called something on the podcast, but I can't remember is what. It? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So create a feedback library, not a backlog of features. Make sure you're setting expectations with your team and your customers. Product feedback policy is a really good step for doing that. Um, and we're now highly recommending that customer facing teams own communication um, and that product teams kind of support them. Um, just got a question come in. Uh, I can only confirm they say no managed expectations, but not explaining why makes it worse. Yeah, yes. 100%. 100%. If you think about things the other way around as well, I'm sure you all, like we do here, use loads of other SaaS products. And it's the times where. <laughs> There's no communication and there's no explanation where it feels frustrating. Um, whereas when a company turns around and says, that's a nice idea, but we're not going to do that because X, insert reason, and here's what we are working on, that actually makes me feel really good. It makes me feel like they're in control, they know what they're doing, they've got a plan, um, and you get it. And that's for good fit customers. That's yeah, that's generally all all you need, yeah. which is which is great. What was the, have you forgotten? Have we done no, nothing? Have you not forgotten? Okay, okay, go for it. So <laughs> one thing that will be available soon, hopefully this week, is actually team tagging <gasps> in comments. Dun dun dun. More sound effects, but I don't know how to get out of here. Uh, um, I'll do that for you. I'll you just do a quick preview on our demo site before we wrap up. Um, so if you just click on any request. Do you know what? I don't know any team names in this account. However, I'll just do, I'll just tag myself. Um, this is something that our dev team is working on. You will soon be able to just tag a team member in a comment, grab them right there, tell them what they need to know. And when you add that comment, um, that team member will get notified that they were tagged in a comment. Yay! <laughs> so if you just need to contact somebody directly, um, other people will actually get the notification. So we'd love your feedback on that. You can turn off your comment notifications now. Um, when it's released, you'll be able to, this is quite detailed, um, but you'll be able to unsubscribe from comment notifications and just get mentions if you're the kind of user that just wants to know about, mm -hmm. you know, those specific things that you were mentioned in, or you can keep comments notified and get both. Yeah. But again, this is so good, especially for bigger companies where you might be working on something and you need to loop in a member of the product team or whoever, you can just go ahead and, and do that now. So we've got a lot of yeah. people excited about this. Especially we, like, in the use case we were just talking about. So if you're customer success and you just need, you need some details on why you need to decline something, you can just ping the product team. Cool. So we've had a, a good question coming actually. Um, regarding the backlog versus a library, we constantly argue internally if we should or not decline and reject requests to keep it clean. Any suggestions, tips on this? This was the last webinar I went over this. Did we? Yeah. Do you want to go ahead then? You blocked, <laughs> if you blocked it out. So we 100% think you should be saying no to things. Um, it's brilliant if the request comes up again and people can see instantly yeah. that you've declined that request and the reasoning for uh, for doing so. Oh, da, da, da. But those email notifications are a danger of being spammed to death and then ignoring the emails. Yes, so in that case, ah. you can have your teams unsubscribe from comment notifications and they'll just get the notifications when they're 
when they're specifically mentioned. So that's something you'll kind of need to decide on your side how you want that to be set up and advise your teams to set up their settings accordingly. Um, we can we'll follow up with that yeah, as well, we'll follow up. to make we'll sure it's, on that. Uh, it's clear. Um, but quickly back to the point about saying no to things. If there's stuff you are unsure of, like this whole keeping it clean or whatever mm -hmm. if if there is something you're genuinely unsure of just leave it as um i'll just pop into i don't like the concept of keeping it clean i think yeah again yeah. back to the library analogy um i do like saying no to things if you know you're not going to build them but there's yeah. no need to keep it clean um no. keep you know as long as you can do a search and find what you need at that point yeah, that's, that's it. So if you are unsure about something, just leave it set to awaiting feedback and explain why. I say, we don't know if this is going to be valuable or not yet. Yeah. We're going to keep an eye on it and see if it, you know, for the future. But if it's something you, you don't know, you just, I, mean, I think, to be honest, like two years ago, if we, if we would have had that approach, we would have declined intercom. We would have, yeah. And we actually have done that. And then, you know, as it becomes more yeah, as, as you grow and develop. And as yeah. You, yeah, exactly. As things change. Um, you can kind of keep those kinds of things open, but things that are against your strategy definitely decline and explain why. Custom status. <laughs> uh, yes, custom status is, is on the list, isn't it, Ali? Yes. So the ability to, to manage what these, uh, what these statuses are. Um, cool. Oh, one more question. Oh, a thumbs up. Great. Okay, perfect. Um, Fantastic. So I hope this has been useful. Yeah, I think that covers everything. The workflow diagram on the final slide. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I'll let you mention that. Hannah's hidden the time on, on her computer, but we've actually gone way over. Have we? It's 4.37. <laughs> I've hidden the time on computer so I can just be more focused. Sorry, everyone. Normally we're a lot quicker than this. <laughs> Hopefully it was helpful, though. Um, so... To kind of summarize what I'll be sending out, is, I'll send out a bunch of resources, but there is now a workflow diagram that I will send you the link to, and this will help you take what we've just kind of gone through in a lot of detail. Um, and you'll be able to actually kind of think about it more strategically and see how it will actually fit into your process. So I'll be sending that out. Look out for that in the next few days. Um, and like the checklist of items, I guess, for the, getting things done. Yeah. At super practical level um and like i said earlier recording and everything will be uh, available at some point this week as well so so do share it around and and send us your comments and and feedback yeah and if you don't we'll be in touch <laughs> we will find you, we will find you. <laughs> sounds so creepy and play britney spears on the next call on repeat <laughs> all right all right i think that's it <laughs> thank you everyone thank you